Okay, so this is crazy. I saw the title of the video and thought we should go through it together. So let's do this. My mom died around when I was like seven. She died because she, my dad was beating on her and stuff, beating her up. And he ended up killing her. So now he's in jail for life. So really I had to go on my own and do everything on my own at, starting at 13. 16 now, I've been doing this three years. You started working the streets at 13? And who raised you? Who raised me? My uncle. Your uncle? So I was out here starting from 13 to now, raised in the Nickerson Gardens. Yeah, South Central LA. Projects. Mm -hmm. So you're 16 now? Yeah. And uh, so you're working Figaro Street? Yeah, I work Figaro. I don't work it as much, but I work almost like every night, every day. It's a struggle, like, I'm, I would wanna get out of this, like, so bad. It's a lot that comes with you working on FIG. You're risking your life every day. So it's like, I don't know. I'm gonna make something out of myself one day, though. I'm sorry? I'm gonna make something out of myself one day, though. That's good. You're in school still? Um, no, I graduated because I did homeschool. So I graduated already. So you're 16, but you graduated high school already? Mm -hmm. You're a good student? Yep, I wanted to graduate early because I know what I do, and I can't do that at the same time, and I'm not gonna be a fail in life because I wanna work on FIG, you know? So I had to do both at the same time. And that's what I did, and yeah, it got me somewhere though. So your childhood sounds very rough because you lost your parents. Yeah. How was it after you, your dad went to prison and you lost your mom? It was hard because even though my mom and dad used to fight a lot, I was so close with my dad and I was so close with my mom. If my mama didn't have it, my daddy did. If my daddy didn't have it, my mama did. So it was like, it hurt me to see both of them leave me. It was like, what am I going to do now? And I got little sisters that I have to raise. I got brothers that I got to raise. I got a kid. You have a child? Yeah. He's one. His name is Ajante. And, yeah. But he's out in Oakland. So he's in Oakland with, with who? He's out there with my grandma. Your grandmother? Yeah. So you're working for Figaro. Do you, you work with a pimp? Yeah, I do. Um, I've been working for him since I started. It's been really, it's been pretty good. He don't... It's a good relationship? Yeah, he don't hit you. He don't... Um, and I'm a quiet person when it comes to him yelling at me. I don't talk, you know, do all that reckless stuff and be loud. I just sit there and be quiet, you know, because I just be thinking through my thoughts. Like, I got so much other shit that I could be worried about that I don't phase me, you know? Wait, so he keeps how much of your money? All of it. But I get anything I want, anytime I want. And that's what I like about it, that I get anything I want, any time I want. If I want it, I'm gonna get it right there, then and there. So you, you could get out if you wanted to. Yeah, I could leave if I wanted to. But you, you choose to stay with him, because he's, he's treating you well. Mm -hmm. You've been arrested out there in the street? Yep, I have. <laughs> Tickets and all. But they don't really bother me no more, no more as much, unless it's, you know, Vice Day or Tuesday or Thursdays. They don't really bother me because I'm not no, like, I don't be out there every single day and I don't be naked as much like that either. I have class for myself too. So, yeah. Just when you think that your life is crazy maybe or complicated or harsh, you hear a story like this and you're like, oh my goodness. So, her dad has killed her mum and is doing life in prison. She has no parents and she started working as a sex worker, as a prostitute at 13 years old. She's now 16 years old. She has a son who's living with her grandma and you really, I think we sometimes feel like these these stories are only in films that these stories are nowhere like, like they don't happen re in reality when 
Um, this video was released in uh, June last year. So it's a crazy story, right? I have been arrested. I've been arrested for not only prostitution, I've been arrested for stabbing girls, but it was only for my safety. I was helping myself, you know, defending myself. I done been, I was held at gunpoint just what, three weeks ago by a pimp and I thought he was a trick. It was like, um, we was on eight, me and my, um, my wifey, me and my wifey was on 81st Street and he was playing as a Mexican, but he wasn't, he was a pimp under the mat, under the uh, helmet, cause he was on a motorcycle. So after that, I've never got on a motorcycle again. I got on the motorcycle and we were just supposed to be going to the Sunrise Motel, which is my motel that I was staying at at the time. And we went past it. He went on the freeway, he was driving off fast. I didn't know what to do, I was panicking. He took me to an alley, he put me at gunpoint and the only way I could really, you know, not get killed is I had to, I had to do something. So. You've had other bad experiences with, with your, the, the Johns you pick up. You said what? Do you have you had bad experiences with the, the guys that pick you up? No, not really. Mexicans. Um. Sometimes they do play you. They they say they got this, but they really don't. That's why <laughs> I get my money beforehand now. Mm -hmm. Then I used to like pay, I used to charge them by time, but now it's like all together, so. Do you recall the first time? You were 13 when you started, right? Yeah. Do you recall the first time you did this? Um, the first time I did this, I was scared. I was um, on 66th and Fig, and you told me, I didn't know what a pimp was, I didn't know what a hoe was, I just knew what Fig was. I just got to stop it there, right? Because, because you know, she's talking about the first time she sold her body or she worked as a sex worker at 13 years old. That's so young. Even now she's talking at 16 years old. That's so young. It's a child. It's a child. Now, I'm always trying to be... I'm always trying to have some optimism in the work that I do with my YouTube channel and my social media accounts. I'm always trying to put a bit of optimism in the conversation because I think it's necessary. I think it encourages us that change is going to happen. But when you watch something like this and you see what is going on out there, you just can't help but feel absolutely down about it. Like, what the hell is going on? What the hell are we are we allowing to happen on this planet? So I had a friend telling me about it. So we go on big and the whole time this pimp, I'm thinking like he trying to be my boyfriend or something, but it's not even that. He's hopping out the car on me and stuff. I'm not no I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, um, why is he getting out the car on me? I'm thinking you have to snatch me up and stuff, but they can't touch you. And if they do, then Something gonna happen unless they get away. But I didn't know what what was going on. And the guy, he, the, another pimp drove past and he was like, well, you out of pocket. What do you expect them to do? And I was like, what's out of pocket? You know, cause I didn't know what that was. And my HP, she told me, she was like, out of pocket is when, you know, but I didn't have no pimp at the time. But out of pocket is when you feeding into a pimp and his ism and stuff, and feeding into everything he's saying, paying attention to him. If you give him a little bit of attention, that's out. They're gonna keep turning the corner, they're gonna keep doing everything. And they're not gonna stop until you either leave or if you don't leave, obviously you like the attention, you know? So I learned to stay in pocket, <laughs> you know? What's, what's the worst thing about doing this? The worst thing about doing this is I feel like if it's slow or the police, that's the worst thing about doing this is the police to me. Even though like they say, oh, the police can't do nothing to you on these days, that days, yeah, that's not true. They can do stuff to you all they want. Some of the police is cool. Like yesterday I had a police pull up on me. He was like, what's up? I was like, hey, he was like, um, 
um, you working on Fig tonight? I was like, yep. And he was like, go to Manchester. I said, nope. Because, <laughs> mm-mm. But, um, yeah, some of the police do be cool and stuff. I be on Long Beach Boulevard, too. Okay. Not just Fig. Is there several different? I be on Long Beach Boulevard and morally at nights because, um, at night because I don't want me risking more of my life on Fig. That's more of a risk to me. Figaro is the busiest of the streets, but there's Western, and there's Long Beach, and there's other areas too. Long Beach Boulevard. Are drugs a part of your life? Yeah, I smoke weed, marijuana. That's it? Yeah, that's it. You get depressed sometimes doing this? Um, yeah, a lot of times because the fact that I have a little sister and she's doing it too, it's like, dang, I could have taught her way much more and just, you know, because I was in group homes and stuff too. I would run away from group homes just to, you know, work. But as soon as I got out of that group home stuff, it was like, God was like, he was punishing me in many different ways. And it was just crazy because it was like my sister don't think I love her because of the stuff that I did. She don't think I love her. Me going out on fig every night, she don't think I love her. I wasn't spending time with her as much as I used to. Nothing was the same. So then she started doing it. And now she think it as, oh, I'm with my sister now. But no, like, I don't even want her doing this. And I started. This is no childhood, right? This is no childhood. This is so far away from what, you know, we all want children's upbringing to be. And the problem with people so young getting involved in this type of activity um, is that because they don't have much, I suppose, life experience or maturity or, or level of understanding to know that what they're doing is not what they should be doing at their age. All the time, but I know I didn't listen. You can't get somebody that don't listen to listen if they, you know, it's not gonna work. So I tried my best, you know, to give her money instead of her working for it as best as I can. How old is your sister? She's 14. And she's working. Do you think you're addicted to the fast money? Yeah, I am. The lifestyle of this mm -hmm. is, is so tempting, right? It's, it's real tempting because it's fast. It comes up fast, and if it's slow, it'll pick up. That's why you keep regulars. Regulars, all you got to do is call them. Come get me on fig, money, rock. You never know how much you're going to get. So who are we angry at here? Are we angry about at, at the people who are um, the 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 the, cl the clients that are coming with the money? Are we angry at the girl? I don't feel angry towards the girl. Are we angry at ourselves for allowing these situations? to unfold without us jumping in and coming in to intervene and supporting these children who um who don't have parents or who have parents who neglect them or who have or who have parents who are not around i just don't know how to it's, it's almost like i want to put blame somewhere uh, but i just don't know where to place it do you ever do you ever look back at your, your situation and just think, man, this is crazy that I'm doing this? Yeah, because... It's dangerous. Before it's... I was doing all this, I was still going through depression. I was going through suicide, mental thoughts. I was cutting all that all over my arms, everywhere, just blood. And it was, like, crazy because I was really going through some stuff. So me thinking about it now, it's like I feel like I changed because... I ain't cut in, what, some years. You haven't? Yeah. That's good. That's, that's hecka good. Because I was doing it constantly. It was like I couldn't stop because that's the only thing that was taking my pain away. It's not like I could smoke at the time. I wasn't allowed to. So.
do you, do you have dreams or goals that you'd like to? Yeah, I want to do makeup and I want to do nails, and that's what my that's what I want to do. I'm about to have my own shop pretty soon here, a nail salon. That's great. Um, and it's gonna be a black-owned business, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be popping. It's, that's gonna be a lot of money. Good for you. So, yeah. That'd be great. That is gonna be great. I just gotta wait for all this stuff to open. Yeah, it's a hard time right now. Do you, do you think doing this for the last three years has changed your personality, changed the way you are? Yeah, it has. It actually made me a stronger person because of, I was weak at the time. And you know, you, I mean, not saying weak, I wasn't weak. It was, I was not in the right state of mind. And if you got somebody that can put you in the right state of mind, then you ain't gotta worry as much. So I think I, yeah, I did change a lot. Like I got more, into myself, more seeing who myself was, more loving myself. Even though I'm on fig, I still got time to love myself. And I doesn't seem like you're listening to a 16 year old, does it? More like a more more so an adult. I'm not sure what you think about that, but I just thought in my head she seems a lot more um, developed in in her conversation than a than a 16 year old. Got somebody telling me all good thoughts all good knowledge too so i could still overthink what i have did in the past think now and it's like okay i see you trying to so it's like it's what advice would you give to a young girl who's considering doing something like what you're doing my advice for you is if you're gonna do it i'm not gonna say because anybody first time they not gonna know what they're doing but if you're gonna do it make sure you do it right and make sure you're not doing it all your life. Because if you're doing it all your life, where are you getting? You just giving your money to the same person. You're not investing in it. So my advice for you is if you're going to do it, invest in something. Don't just keep doing it all your life because that's out. <laughs> it's out. How much do you think your self-worth, I mean, just what you believe you deserve in life, plays a part in, in, in your decision to do this and... and and getting your getting yourself here, and because if you if you believe you're destined for something better, you probably wouldn't allow this to happen, right? Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, so you're saying like? I just wonder. I wonder if like you know you had a rough childhood because you lost your parents, and sometimes if you're not supported the right way, you end up feeling like you don't deserve better things in life. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you have a good head on your shoulders because you're, you're looking to get out, you're looking to do something productive, and that's great. You finished school, school early, which is really remarkable. So there's a lot of, a lot of positives I see. Yeah. But I just, I just wonder if there's something that brought you down this path. What brought me down this path is the group of friends I was hanging around. Oh, your friends? Yeah. But I didn't know about nothing about hoeing, pimping, fig, none of that until I started hanging around with a group of friends. And I thank them group of friends sometimes because it got me somewhere. Some of them friends are still here. I only got, what, two friends that's still here. Other ones, they ran off, you know. So you have a lot of friends that do this as well? Yeah, I mean, not really friends. I got homegirls. I don't do friends. Yeah. It's family. Do you have any friends? I got friends, yeah. yeah. But they don't do fig and stuff. I got one friend that do fig, and she barely be over there. But <laughs> how much money do you make in a night? In a night, I say like, if you working on fig, by the end of the night you'll have what seven hundred, eight hundred, if you doing it right, or five hundred, if you doing it right. But the most I've made in one night is four racks. Is what? It's four racks. You've made four thousand in a night. Yes, oh. in one night. Okay, so the more I'm listening to this, the more I'm wondering about, um, so this is America, I'm wondering about what happens in the UK um, with the rules and the regulations and the age limits and um, what's illegal and what's illegal. Uh, and uh, this seems like something that is worth investigating. I am sure in, this, in the UK there are um, underage girls working on the streets and that makes me feel very sad and um it's something that i'd like to uh explore a little more and just see whether we can find out what's going on in this country with all this as well have a good mouthpiece otherwise trick's not going to date you 
Yeah. <laughs> so when the guys pick you up, you go to the hotels, you go to the car? You, you can do car dates, you can do hotels. I, yeah. But really, I like move it in more to the car instead of going to a hotel. It's faster. It's faster. And if they want to go to a hotel, I charge them more. And they do it too. So how many guys will you do this with in a night? I say like five. five. For real, for real. If you keep like, well, not even, not five. Maybe 10, maybe, you know, somewhere near a lot, but not a lot, not a lot. Because you can get money out of one person over and over and over and over again. You don't gotta go to the next person and wait for the are you, next are person. Are you ever tricking guys where you're getting them to give you money yeah, and not, not having sex with them? Yeah, I the finesse, but. That's part of the game, right? Yeah, it's part of the game. Yeah. They can't do nothing to you if you walk out the door. What There's they a reason they're do? called tricks, right? tricks you're a trick i tricked you you, you know <laughs> so yeah does this has this changed the way you view men you think yes it has a lot because you would never you would never think like a pimp is really a pimp like you might hear it in songs i used to hear it in songs and i know what it is but be saying it and now I know, and it's like, dang, I was saying all that. <laughs> Look where I ended up. Yeah. So, I mean, so the pimps today, they're not driving the big Cadillacs and the, and the flashy clothes. They're, they're more undercover, the modern ones, right? And do they almost look like their boyfriends when they're coming at you, and then all of a sudden you realize that you're giving them their money? Oh, um, no, because when you, now that i am been doing this for so long, I know when a pimp is a pimp. I know when you just saying you're a drug dealer, some of the pimps try to play, oh, I'm just a drug dealer. Nah, as soon as I see a black person, I don't, I don't care what it is, I walk away. Unless you're an old black man, I'll date you. But if you're not, ain't so no you way. So you stay away from black guys for that reason? Yeah. They're always playing games? Mm -hmm. All right, China. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. And good luck with your uh, your dreams. That that'd be great to get out and do something like that. Yeah. You seem like you got the ability to do that. Yeah. It'd be cool to see. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. That's the end of the interview. I'm normally stopping myself from interrupting the video and talking too much but on this one I just didn't really know what to say uh, I feel so upset that there will be thousands of stories like this um, and hundreds tens of thousands of stories not necessarily children or or minors or young people feeling like uh, doing work like this is their only option but um, many other uh, areas of activities that we don't want children involved in um, so many children will be feeling like that's their that's their options and then they get the, the quick and fast money and it's all good and it's going well they feel it like it's going well but actually they're not really getting anywhere with their life uh, like we would like them to, building friends, building communities, having something stable going on, not putting themselves at risk. She is getting into men's cars, going to men's hotels. She's that. That's actually a. That's actually a good point to make, right? That she's putting herself at risk every night on multiple occasions. She's sixteen years old. She should be in school. She should be in a home, in a family home with people who are looking after her and showing love to her and she's showing love back. And this is not the way things should be. This is not the way things should be. And like I say, I reckon that there are tens of thousands of, of stories where children are, are just making do with their situations and us as adults, we're not helping We've got no, we, we, we have not got enough systems in place to help the children that have, that are, that don't have parents, that have been neglected by parents, that have been, that don't have homes. 
because we're all busy doing our thing, trying to make our lives amazing. And then the for- the kids are getting forgotten, left behind. All right. Thank you.